What's up, Perfectly Average Golfers? Welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to the final part here at Sand Canyon Country Club. We've already completed the mountain, we've already completed the desert. We finished plus 12 overall through those 18. It was a plus seven and a plus five independently. We got one more set of nine to play. We're gonna be chasing daylight here a little bit, so I'm not gonna be talking to the camera too, too much. We've got the Valley Nine coming up, and well, I'm really excited to kind of get this going. It's been a nice little uh, workcation for me, adding an extra day to play some golf, so let's get at it. I'm not gonna waste any more time. First hole coming up. It's a par four with an elevated tee box here, playing about 373, and uh, well, dog legs to the right, so that's definitely gonna be the line, kind of coming off the tee box, staying right of the bunkers, and then hopefully giving yourself an easy wedge in for hopefully something that's on in two. Let's see, driver was uh, going pretty darn well for us on the last nine, so we'll see if we can keep that up. That may be too far right, but we'll see. I hit that really well. A little spinny, just kept the face open a little bit too long. Let's see if we can find it. So we found it. Um, they've got like these little cart path mats going on and I don't really know if I'm supposed to hit off this or not. So I'm just gonna scoot this onto the fairway. Uh, great drive. I think it caught this little ridge right here and then just rolled all the way down and eventually settled on this leaf. So I'm gonna bump that up and then play a sand wedge here for our second shot. Got about 70 yards left. So I'm gonna take about a three quarter swing. Hopefully we just get good contact here. I would love to get this thing up there tight. Nice shot. Yeah, I kind of pushed with the wind and I think I left the face a little bit open, but hey, we're on, we got a putt for birdie. much more down the hill. Oh, you animal. <laughs> and then it wants to snap a little bit harder for me on the way back. A little bit of an unfortunate bogey, but such is life. This sunset's gonna be really cool against these mountains. I'm not sure how much of this we're going to see, but we definitely will get some sunset action. Looks like the sun is actually peeking through some of this uh, cloud cover, so hopefully, we get a little bit more time to play some golf. I mentioned this in the first two parts, but in case you're just checking out the third for the look at the Valley Course, we are tipping out this course. And um, I think it's definitely approachable if you're hitting close to 250 plus yard drives. Nothing from the back is really all that challenging. The Desert Course had two really big holes that I, I think would challenge people on the back. It's like a 240 par three and then a 590 uh, par five. So some challenges definitely from that uh, desert course, but I think largely if you're getting some pretty solid drives, about 250 plus, you should be fine from the back box. Everything's playing around 33 to 3,500 per nine. So really not that bad at all. Let's get on to the next hole. Got ourselves a par four playing about 402 from the back and uh, it's a tight fairway. The other thing about this course is that the waste area does come in a bit sooner than you'd like. The fairways are tight, but there is some forgiveness and some safety blanket in the rough. It's holding the ball pretty darn nice, and it's really not too hard to get out of. So we've got driver here, just trying to keep things as close as possible up the middle of the fairway. And then, uh, I don't know, we'll see what happens from there, because I think it's going to give us about a mid-iron in. There's a pretty stiff headwind right now. Yeah. Yeah, that should be absolutely money. Cut it right in the middle of the face, love it. Let's go, baby. Well, I imagine we're gonna be hitting a drive into that sometime soon. That backdrop is largely what you see throughout the entirety of the desert course, if you missed that second part, but it looks like we're gonna have some pretty immaculate views as we get here on the valley. All right, great drive. Leaves us with a pitching wedge as we're trying to get to this back pin position on the back right side of the green. Green is looking like there's a plateau up there, so we definitely want to try to get it there. Heavy headwind, like we mentioned, about 120 yards, but a 135 club is what I've got right here. And we're gonna hit that as full as we possibly can. I think this is gonna balloon a little bit on us. That might not get there. Oh. Looks like it got up there but it's gonna be right. I don't know what's back there. Hopefully we have a look from there for an up and down. 
difficult chip here. There really isn't a true fringe based on how it's cut right now. So I, I, I would love to put something on the fringe to soak it, but I'm scared if I just land it on this fringe, it'll just die. But I can't go too far into the green because it's going to roll for a while. So I'm going to lift this into the air and hopefully just land it barely on the green. That's a little further than I wanted it, but it, it worked out perfect. Take that. Look at par right from there. All right. Par here on two. What a cool backdrop. <laughs> so awesome. Hole number three, first par three here on the Valley course and an incredible looking tee shot from here. But it's playing about 178. I have a little bit of helping wind and the pin is dead center mid as far as where it's placed today. So I'm gonna take a seven iron here and hit about a 170 shot and just kind of see how it goes. Hit that thin. Yeah, just on the front of the green. Not great contact, but hey, we're on, we got a putt. This pin was much further back than the, uh, the card was saying for today's pin position. Up on a little plateau as well, so a difficult putt here. Wow, I thought that would have broke. I thought that speed would have been okay, but neither of both of those things just happened. Ah, snuck right by it. Yeah, just dead straight putts all day. I really need to remember that. I won't say that that was kind of baffling me at all on the first two nines that we played. But for some reason, like looking at all these mountains, I'm thinking that there's gonna be more break in just how the course is laid out than there actually is. Maybe a bit of a too, maybe too much mental anxiety from what we had when we were played down in Greenville the last couple of times. So it's a bogey, a little unfortunate here on a par three that we should have been able to get up there, up and in for three, but such is life, on to the next one. All right, next hole up is the first par five here on the Valley, playing about 539. And man, I'm not gonna lie, the bunkers on the right, the deepest one plays about 270 or so. And I don't really have a good look at the fairway to the left of that. Dog's legs to the left. And I don't even think with a great driver we're gonna get there in two anyway. So I'm gonna take a safe approach, pulling out three wood. We might have to hit three wood twice on this hole just to get a solid look at uh, maybe even a birdie here. So I think we're gonna play this one a little bit safe. I just don't wanna slice anything because it doesn't look like there's a lot of mist towards the right. And uh, well, as much as the confidence of the driver is high, it's not that high at the moment gonna take this thing straight up the left side hopefully we get a good contact it's just not worth the risk for a driver I don't think so take a nice easy three wood super awesome looking tee shot here yeah I just hit that thing so pure yeah that should be absolutely perfect I just think driver would have been too much of a risk. I also have a helping win, so I don't know. Just not worth it, I don't think. We'll see. Maybe we had more space, but I love the contact on this three wood today. Yeah, this line and this distance was absolutely perfect. Rough comes up right here, cart path, a bunch of trash. You don't want to be hidden out of that for your second shot. So really happy with the decision. There was no way I was going to get driver, I think, over the corner up to get over to that fairway. So it's just not worth the risk. Got about 250. It's playing about a front pin position, though. So I'm going to stick with this three wood. We may be very well with a good piece of contact. Get up there. Let's see, just worried about the contact first. Fade a little bit for me. Oh, it's fine. It's tucked on the left side of that fairway. I thought like I caught that really well, but I don't know, maybe about a 230 shot or so right there. It's pretty good. Up and down chance for bird. Yeah, so, yeah, about 230 or so on that shot. Somewhere around that area. I threw it off the deck. I feel like it doesn't really get all that far, but that's okay. Um, we have a pretty testy pitch shot here. Need to get it up and then land it soft. The pin is really far forward, so not a lot of space to work with here.
Yeah, I felt really good about the shot, but it didn't really work back for us at all, so it rolled pretty far past the hole, but we gotta look at birdie. Track, track. Nope. Oh. Oh. Man, so close. That was such a good putt. I'm telling you, we've had a handful of really solid rolls with the putter today. That one, I knew it was going to break, but I didn't think it was going to break as much as I thought it was going to break. I mean, I clearly overthought how much break there was going to be. That's such a forehead statement. But with uh, where my lines have been, I've been taking a little bit off them because, again, these greens are not moving like they do in North and South Carolina. But, oh, well, par here. Great hole, great contact, great shots all around. Next hole up, a big par four, 451, and a uh, slight dog leg to the left. And this tee shot, is it's, it's not blind, but the amount of fairway that I see right here is very limited. Um, so it's kind of hard to pick a starting line. I think the more left we are, the better, but it's going to be hard to tell. We're definitely going to be taking driver because that should still be enough club without going too far. And then uh, we'll see what we have left. This is a really interesting hole, and, and we're playing pretty well right now. So let's see if we can keep swinging driver well. So that was a pretty bad slice. Uh, I didn't look super hard for it, but it went up into the trash, I'm pretty sure. So unless we find it somewhere out with the cart path, I think it's probably out of play. We've got five hybrid. Pin is dead center in the middle of the green, but back. Kind of hard to see from here. It's playing about 190, about 200 to the back. So I've got five hybrid playing right at that 190 number. Great. Be good. Be the right number. Didn't see it fully down, but I hit that perfect, and the distance should put us in the middle of the green somewhere. Well, we surprisingly went long. Um, it was right on line, but I think we actually carried the green, and it left us with this. Difficult position here with this chip because it's kind of sitting in a weird spot. Just trying to carry this thing onto the green. Hope it kind of rolls down. Should be a little bit left to right on this. Not ideal, but we're on and putting. Ah, I wanted to come left to right and then just kind of stopped. That's tough. So that's a double there with the penalty, unfortunately. Ah, man, it was a good contact, good hole all the way through, but really outside the drive, got a little spitty on us. So tough double, but we move on. We can still put together a very consistent round throughout all three nines. So let's go ahead and get at it. Hole six, it's playing 396 as a par four. And again, there's a bit of a split fairway situation. There's a lot of that out here where you've got a bunch of just waste area in between two separate fairways. So driver's gonna be really not approachable. It's about 270 to where the waste starts. It's about 315 to carry. We obviously don't have 315 in the bag. So uh, we're gonna take out the three wood here. Nice easy shot up the middle of the fairway. Slight dog leg to the right, I believe. And then they'll leave us about a mid iron in. So here we go. Let's see if we can keep good contact with this three wood. That's spinny. Don't know about that one. Man, that's not good. We'll see, but it very well maybe two penalties in a row. All right, well, we found it way off the fairway. Not a great shot, and we've got no idea where we're going. Never played this course before, so I'm gonna take a blind guess that we're gonna have to go right over the top of this corner here. Let's see, I got nine iron. GPS is telling me about 150, so let's see. Maybe we get lucky here. Put it a little heavy, but it should be up and over. I don't know, let's find out. Like I mentioned, I hit that pretty fat. Um, I have no idea if that would have been the right club or not. We didn't have a look at it. This pin is tucked against the fringe to the left, pretty far back there. So we're gonna open up the face, try to get something to lift up there, hopefully sit nice and pretty close to it. That is not well done. 
Come down. Come down that slope. Keep coming down that slope. Ha. Ah. Good effort. All right, save the bogey. Next hole, par three, super down the hill. Playing about 168 to the front from what I'm reading. So I'm gonna probably take a seven iron here as the pin is front location. Even though there's a lot of space in the back, I think being on the front side of the screen is the best option, even if it means chipping if you stay short. So I got seven iron, Let's see how it goes. Hit it really well. I think it went a little right. Nice shot. Yeah, it's right side, but it was the right club. It's on the greens, just right side. Again, I feel like there should be way more break in some of these putts than there actually are. That almost <laughs> stayed outside too. I had that inside right. I'm glad I put it inside and not outside right. Good par. All right, second to last hole. It's a par four, but I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It almost plays like the par three on the desert course. That's 283 from the back, um, which means we will be taking driver, not just the three wood that we used on that par three from the second part. Um, and the line is going to be a bit strange because the green is being visually guarded by some trash on this mound right here. But I think that's actually the line going right over the top of that waste. And hopefully you find something on the green. I did see the pin when I was driving up. It's back and lapped. So we got some space to the left. Let's use it. Not that far left. It went straight and it cleared the mounds. It could be good. We hit it right in the middle of the face. Uh, it might be just like back left side of the green or maybe front left side of the green. Hard to say. That was a little bit too far left though. All right, so there's actually a second hill behind the first hill and I would be surprised if it cleared it. So we're taking a drop just kind of close to where this trash is. It does put us about 20 yards away from the green though. It's based on the line that we had taken. So I'm gonna open up the face. Gotta get this up. Hopefully let it sit. Not a ton of green to play with, but there is some back there. That could be very good. I don't know how much that's gonna roll out, but the line was okay, and I think the lift was okay too. Great putts. It's a bogey though. Again, penalty's been kind of kicking us a little bit. Yeah, some tee box mishaps have kind of hurt us on this uh, final part here at Sand Canyon Country Club. Uh, but still, looking at the overall score, we're still playing pretty well. So it definitely goes to show that even though you might be struggling in one area, keep your head up, keep plugging away at it, and you'll still be able to put together a pretty solid round. One more to go here. Final hole for the day. Final part, final hole. Sunset is going to be unbelievable off this tee box shot, but it's a par five. Super cool elevated tee box. Good drive will put you hopefully around that tree and then you've got a very, I think, opportunistic time to get on in two here if you hit a great drive and a good follow-up. So let's see if we can maybe get a look at Eagle or at least something comfortable for Birdie to try to put a bird on the card here for this final nine. Hold the fairway. Yeah, it went right side. Very well may still hold the fairway, but it went, it, it started fading right. We'll, we'll see if we can get that. It's a good shot though. All right, we crept into the rough and we've got a tree blocking our next shot. So we can't get there in two. It would have been a really big poke anyways, as I think this drive was not as far as I was hoping it would go. I've got five hybrid. I think I can clear that with five hybrid. I'm gonna try to go right over the middle of it and hopefully it gets up and over. Oh yeah, it cleared for sure. Question is, where will it land? Should be right side. Didn't look like it was fading too much. Hopefully we can find that. Okay, 
We found it. 75 yards. One more shot. Get us close. Take us home. About three quarters swing. Mid pin. Let's go. Oh, it's so good. Just sit and stay right there. That was great. It's a great piece of contact. I think we're going to be good. Well, neither sat nor stayed. We got a testy putt for bird. Didn't quite give it a full chance, but that's a solid putt. I really can't be upset about it. Par to finish. Let's go, baby. It's a plus six round, perfectly average golfers. That means for the day, through 27 holes, we finished plus six on average per nine, which is great news for the game. Now, I'll say this much, just quickly about my game, and then we'll talk the course here. The game is coming along, but the putting out here was much easier than we were used to. So much easier than we were used to. Everything was rolling pretty damn straight, or it was very telegraphed that there was going to be some pretty solid break in it. Back home in Western North Carolina and in South Carolina, the greens don't give you those easy reads because the whole course is set in a bit of a mountain. So uh, really happy about the rounds overall. That's unbelievable. Averaging plus six per round. Now for the course, this valley course is dope. This whole place is really dope. And look, is it the nicest course out here? Probably not, but the facilities are very well kept. The clubhouse is awesome. And all three sets of nine were super fun. I think for LA golf, it's also very affordable. $70 per 18 out here. And that's if you don't go like afternoon. After we're doing it, it's like 45. And this is a very well-kept $70 course, if not a well-kept $45 course for the area. I'm just comparing it to the greens fees that I saw around the area and when I played out here last. So. Really happy with the course. I hope you guys enjoyed this three-part series. It's been a lot of fun. A little bit of a Californication out here. We'll be right back into North Carolina. There'll be winter golf out there, so we'll see how things unfold when we get back, see if the game can stay consistent. Been a pleasure being with you guys while we went through Sand Canyon. Hopefully you enjoyed again. Subscribe if you have not already done so already. And until the next point, hey, make sure you out there stay perfectly average. So long.